Good morning, Pernilla. Welcome to Anneli and the Club. We're in South Africa. We're in Johannesburg. And I can tell you right now, the entire country is so excited to hear from you. You wow. don't you oh don't understand. my god. <laughs> Everybody, people are like, what you got Pernilla? We like we got Pernilla. <laughs> This feels so surreal, to be honest, but I love it. <laughs> no, you must love it. You are literally a global face now. Everybody across the globe knows you. How does that feel, first of all? To be honest, so surrealistic. When I sat down at the premiere and just watching the internet just blew up this week, I have been thinking, like, I don't know what is more strange, like the story that happened to us or this. Like, it's been absolutely insane. Because, I mean, you know, uh, I read somewhere today that they're looking to do a movie. Have you already decided? Have you called Cameron to yes? Has she said yes, she'll play you? Oh, my God. If Jennifer Lawrence would call off, like, I would oh. be there 100%. <laughs> I will make sure this message reaches her. So, that yeah. they are casting. <laughs> they know your preference is Jennifer Lawrence. Listen, I, I really think what happened to you guys is... Uh, there aren't enough choice words to use, and I'm not allowed to swear on radio, but it's pretty yeah. shitty, right? Uh, it is. But I, I must ask you that, you know, you say that um, Simon and, and you were friends for eight months until he asked for money. Is, yes. is, is that is that correct that you guys were yeah. friends for that long? Yeah, we were friends for that or what I thought was at least. Uh, mm. No. And I mean, like him and his entire team, I mean, they must have thought I was sitting on millions or something because they went all in for such a long time. And to do all of this just to defraud me in the end, I think that Simon actually thought that I was sitting on more cash in my bank than I had, to be honest. Why is that? Because because I looked at your Instagram, girl, you in Greece, you you're around Europe, you know, you're living the nice life. Do you think that you know that that's the impression you got from you just from what you give off on Instagram? Yeah, but I mean, like, of course, you show off the good part. You don't show uh, show off wow. on Instagram. Like, here's my bills racking up this month. <laughs> I mean, like, no one want to see that. Uh, but I'm very fortunate to have friends, like, all over the uh. world. I would say. So uh, I love traveling. I love to go visit my friends. So that's the, I think that's the irony of, of the whole thing is that the, what you were posting on Instagram created the impression you had money, mm-hmm. and, and and while so it's almost like he felt he fell for the the image that you were portraying. You, you swindled know? him yeah. before you swindled, he swindled you. <laughs> okay, can we please use that? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think like with social media, like we always show up the good things. I mean, like mm. I don't really post going to the grocery shop or something like that. And I think a lot of people can recognize themselves with that. We, we love to post things when we're on a holiday or out for a nice dinner or dressed up mm. with friends. I mean, like you don't sit in there with a glam every day in your house. Mm. But I'm interested. You said that he, uh, he said things that made you feel safe. What were those yeah. things? Can you because I mean, we we know we know the Simon catchphrases, the send money now, or mm. Peter yeah. is down, or uh, every action has got a reaction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the know? reaction does have a reaction. That's the word. <laughs> what did he say to make you feel safe? But he was always this like caring person. I mean, like he would always call up, he would always check up on you. I mean, like one time he literally got it on a flight because I said I had a bad day. And I mean, oh, like within oh. six hours, he was here in Stockholm having coffee with me because I had a bad day. So you were alone with him sometimes because on the, yeah. on the dock, it also, also looks like he, his girlfriend was always around when you were there. So you and him were alone at times. Yeah, of course. Like many times. I mean, like it wasn't like it was all this crazy show. I mean, like he was really there as I thought, like as a normal friend, you know, sitting down, having coffee, going to, I don't know, mm. the numbers of museums and sightseeing places we have been through. I mean, like just to do like normal things that the normal friends do. Mm. I, th- I think that explains a lot because a lot of people have been asking, yeah. you know, obviously in the documentary, like Anneli says, it makes it feel like you guys went to, went on one trip. You know, we don't get the sense that it this big friendship developed, which made it, you know, right. feel very weird afterwards. So it makes a lot of sense that you guys were doing normal friendly things, you know, yeah. just catching up, having a coffee, having a dinner here and there. Yeah. I mean, like I would call him up before going on a date and ask him what shoes to wear, you know, oh, <laughs> because he's a, he's a shoe addict. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. So then I'm, I'm interested to know, how come you were never intimate with him? 
I, to be honest, he wasn't really my type. First, I, you know, like we met and thought that we were going to date, but he was too short for my type. He wasn't, he didn't really have the the looks that I liked. He didn't look like he could we, we didn't do have the deed. That romantic click. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't look like he could do the deed with you. Like, no, yeah, no, no, no. The one. <laughs> I know that feeling when you're just like, yeah, you can't win me. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, I, I yeah. feel you. But then, you okay, so now you have to survive. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You, a man must feel like they can, you know, man you, you know? Yeah. But wait, so Cecile was intimate with him, right? Yeah, so she, she and uh, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm. So I, I once again the entire world wants to know what does Cecile say about his bed skills because he must be really good in bed. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean that's what I people want to know. Have to ask Cecilia about that because like a best friend never tell the secrets. Uh, <laughs> oh come on! Just give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Are no, we talking? I'm not doing this. <laughs> like five or seven, seven out of ten, nine, nine. Does he whisper? Like <laughs> top five for Cecile, you know. <laughs> Oh my goodness! No, no, I'm, I'm not going into that. But uh, yeah, but you can just see the portrait of him. Maybe he know, you know. I think that he, he, he showed. So another thing I want to know because obviously he has the circular, the circus around him. It's it's a guy Aisha, his accountant, and then it's Peter, and then yeah. you know it's drivers, it's all of that. Did you ever have anyone else's number besides his? Yeah, yeah, I had Avisha's number, Peter's number, and then. He worked very closely with a, a person that is not viewed in the documentary, which name is Claudia. Mm-hmm. And I heard her number too. And I mean, she did awful things against me because, you know, like he always brought down women on board as well, because as a woman, yeah. you feel safe yeah. with another yeah. woman. And for me until today, I can be like, come on, we women should stick together. We should, you know, like hold each other's back. It's a rough world out there. And for a woman to do this towards another woman to help this disgusting Piece mm. of math. I mean, like it's. Mm. So, so th- when the documentary idea first came around, um, you know, from the Netflix, obviously you have reservations. I mean, right now here you are. I'm pretty sure you wanted to come to South Africa under a- another reason, but here you yes. are. You know, yeah. all over South Africa, the entire country now knows you. Um, what were your reservations around doing this docky outside of the fact that oh, everyone's gonna judge me and say that I'm a stupid gold digger? Yeah, I mean, like me and Cecilia, we did this media round back in 2019 where everyone basically just like trashed us down. But we knew that that was coming. We just decided Mm -hmm. to do it anyway because it was more important for us, you know, to get it spaced out there and just to make sure that no one else got it hurt. So we Mm -hmm. absolutely knew that. And when we got it into the progress, uh, I mean, we got a contact by an agent in March 2019. And here we are. Now it's released in 2022. So we had no idea that it was going to be this big. When we started mm. this project, I honestly thought I could just tell my friends and family that there's like a small documentary somewhere that if they have mm. questions, they can go in and watch that. I had no idea mm. we were going to hit Netflix this hard. I had absolutely no idea. I, w- I want to ask um, b- on that point, right? So the 2019 is obviously when you guys went public with it. You had the big expose, and now the documentaries come out. This, it's quite a, it's quite an amount of time that's passed. And I, I want to ask the question, you know, and do- obviously you talk about how hurt you are in the documentary. Are you yeah. still are you still emotionally that hurt, or is it just the financial hurt that still remains? You know, is it? No, is obviously. I- I still have some parts. I mean, like when I meet new people, I can sometimes think if someone does something nice to me that they have like an evil Mm. agenda behind it. But I can go in like good periods and bad periods. But I would say like in general, I don't want him to steal my entire life because they Mm. take so much already. I don't want to be a person who can't laugh about things or joke things away. I mean, like in the beginning, me and Cecilia became very good friends. We had this thing. We used to send like all these American Express commercials, like American <laughs> car that you to like, and you know, like we we'll give you unexpected experiences. Then you know, like so we just have to do this. You have to laugh about it sometimes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I mean, you you did the ducky. I know uh, there's a podcast out. I listened to the first episode yeah. today which gives us, you know, more insight. And this is where I heard that you guys were actually friends for a long time. And then, yeah. you know, there's this movie coming out. When do you start making money from this? 
oh my God, I'm sad. Everyone always thinks like, oh, it becomes such a hit. Now you made all your money. It's not really how it works. I, I wished maybe now it was like that. But I mean, <laughs> we are still fighting and I'm just hoping for a good business deal to come in now or, you know, but we still, you know, like do our normal everyday job and, you know, mm. we still have our normal life. But of course, we're hoping for something good to come out of it in the end and everything we never want to, you know, our life to change or think mm-hmm. it was going to be better or anything like that. We just really want our life back. I, when I look back now, I would just do anything to get my life back as it was before mm-hmm. all happened to me. But then and I wouldn't have met Cecilia. I wouldn't have met Eileen. But it's honestly just what I want. Yeah, I see that you guys are, are, are quite good friends. You were in Greece recently with Cecilia. Yeah. Have, you, have you guys been to for therapy? One of you, all of you, have you just gone to see someone? Um, I tried a little bit, but to be honest, friends and family and Cecilia was my best therapist. I mean, like, mm. for, even I, even Eileen, I mean, me and Eileen have a very close relationship as well. We, all of us are. But I mean, just to have someone that you call up and I can just say one word to Cecilia and she understands everything behind it. I don't even have to explain it more. So it's just such a good support system. Uh, right. Because it's I, I like the, I think Eileen described it best. She said what he did was mental abuse. It is. Um, yeah. Can, can you just break that down for me as in like how it attacks you mentally? Well, he had basically brown, uh, brainwashed you for such a long time. So... I mean, like everything that you thought was real was all of a sudden not real. It wasn't the thing that he didn't have this money or something. It was that everything was a lie. I mean, like everything mm. that told you about their childhood and you shared your your life like with someone that you think mm. is very, very close to you and making up these stories. And I mean, it's just heartbreaking, to be honest. And all these people you have met, I mean, like, it's mm. just, I say it's an evil, if you've seen the movie, The Truman Show, have you watched it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Everyone knows, so everyone's in on it. Evil Truman Show throughout this entire time. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure it makes you, I'm sure it makes you feel that, that those eight months of your life is a complete lie. Because, I mean, you become friends with this guy, you have all these experiences, and then you start finding out that all of this is fake. If absolutely every thought I've had over the last eight months, based on these people, based on, on this guy, everything is just a lie. Yeah, everything. Do, do you think that they are on a WhatsApp group where they discuss these things? Because how, how is it such a well-oiled machine of evil? Like, how, like how do they plan? Do, do you have any idea? Is it, is it, is it, does it keep you up at night where you're trying to figure out, like, how do they plan this evilness of theirs? <laughs> I mean, like we have said that. I mean, they could do this like, oh, we have to take a phone call and just go into a separate room to do it. So you could hear it, but you're not supposed to hear it. Uh... And like, we, me and Cecilia have said it, we can just see them like in front of us, like sitting and laughing at each other. Like, yeah, now we're getting her, you know? <sighs> and do you know what um, I, I picked up from the podcast as well, which the documentary doesn't depict well, is that mm-hmm. he didn't just swindle a woman because this thing, it, it, it looks like, you know, it's a sexual thing. Like he goes after women and, you know, he's, you know, he dates them and all of that. But he actually also swindled a lot of men because there's a driver as well who says he was swindled by it. And then there's also, you know, a conversation that maybe Peter didn't know he was like that. Do you believe Peter is part and parcel of the entire thing? Peter is, in my point of view, 100% part of it because he couldn't, what he did in front of me is mm. just pure evil. So no, but I mean, like he, they did defraud a lot of companies, a lot. Mm. And this is what I find so funny uh, when people comment like these little trolls, like, oh, you gold diggers got what you deserve. And it's like, oh, how come no one says that to a company who got defrauded or a man? Mm. I mean, mm, it's not that you're going mm. to write on these like, company's pages mm. and like, oh, you got what you deserved. You were after the money or something. <laughs> it's yeah. so spectacular for me. And also, if you were a gold digger, where's the money you dug? Where is oh my God, pipe? I'm the worst gold digger <laughs> on earth. I will get fired immediately. They're like, no, Penelope, you're supposed to take the money, not give, not give away it. the money. It's like... <laughs> So you, you say you stay with your mom now because you, your life has regressed so much financially because of Simon. You're with your mom. Tell us other things that are not happening in your life because you don't uh, have money. No, I'm not staying with my mom. I have a I have a rental apartment now. But okay. otherwise, I am working, trying to start up some new projects. And I mean, like, I always done good, you know, with investments and things like that before. And then this happened and then Corona happened and just so... Mm-hmm. Now I'm just back on the horse again and just fighting 10 times harder to get back. 
are you are you, are you guys still scared? I mean, you talk about uh, when you came out and when you decided to to release everything in 2019, the fear yeah. you had of Simon, the unknown, could he get you? Are you still scared? Because now, I mean, at the end of this thing, we find out this man is walking around streets in I don't know what country, Israel or wherever he is now. Uh, do you still have that fear? Not anymore. Not since the documentary actually came out. Right. I would say now I think he's more scared of me than I am of him. Mm. Too, oh. I think you would run if you saw me on the street. Do you still have his number on your phone? Yeah, I do. Blocked. Do you, <laughs> you, do, you, do, you, do you look at it sometimes and you want to call it? You're like, ah, let me not. No, because like the person I knew never existed. I mean, like for me, he was a friend who died and he's just, sorry, a little pathetic human. I mean, he's, I feel sorry for him. Like I pity him. He have no... Yeah. You have no loved ones, no one to care about. You only care about himself. I mean, like, that is not a life to live, to be honest. Mm. I, mm. I pity. And um, if you did, if, if look outside of him giving you your money back, what would you like him to say to you? There is nothing that that man can say to me. I mean, like, he's so sick. He's so yeah. sick to be honest. And I mean, so many people have asked me why, you know, like maybe I should be going after him like a civil lawsuit or something. But I mean, like he only have dirty money. So mm. even if mm. I would put money back, I wouldn't want them because I would knew that they come from fraud and someone else have went through hell just mm. for me. And I, I mean, like I've done this from the very start to so just like, I don't want anyone to get hurt. So. Mm. Mm. Listen, um, first things first, I, I don't know. What's your favorite TV show? Just to wrap this up. What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite movie? Just give me that. Uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Can I tell you that all eight seasons of Game of Thrones was nowhere near as riveting as this hour and a half that I watched. Oh my God. No, that would be absolutely insane. You could not like this. No. Listen, I've watched it five times. I have watched my sisters watch it because <laughs> I'm just, I want everyone to see it. Like it's, Look, yeah. at, at your expense, I'm sorry, at Cecilia's yeah. expense, at Eileen's expense, at everybody's swindles expense. But for the rest of us, yo, babe, we're entertained, hey? I'm not going to lie yeah. to you. We are incredibly yeah. entertained. And thank you for bringing those smiles to our faces because I'm pretty sure somebody was going through a terrible time somewhere yeah. across the world. And just this documentary, it, it was it was riveting. Bravo to you ladies for making it happen and bravo to Netflix as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Anele and the club on 947. 947. 947 loves you.